Okay, geometry students, we're going to continue uh, moving along chapter one, which is the basics of geometry. Today, if you'll go ahead and write this heading in your notes, please. Today, we are going to look at points, lines, and planes. Points, lines, and planes. The lesson number is 1.3, so please copy this in your notes. And don't forget also to include the date. Please include today's date. Again, today, we are going to look at points, lines and planes. Now this sounds really simple but the information I'm going to give you today is really foundational for geometry for the rest of the year. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to write certain things using symbolism and I'm going to give you some important definitions that you have to know for your tests and quizzes. So please take some really good notes. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right into this. Here we go. I would like you to first of all, let's go, let me go back a page very quickly, okay? Um, first of all, I would like you to understand about, uh, understand a couple things about when we use the word point in geometry. So please write this in your notes, the word point, okay? Now you should know from Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, if you've had Algebra 2, that sometimes on a coordinate plane, if you were asked to plot a certain point, you would put the point right there. And you know, that is called a point. Now really you don't have to take any notes yet um, other than just writing the word point. Okay, I'm just kind of rambling for a second. I want you to listen to me, okay? Y you know, whenever you put a point um, on a coordinate plane, there's, there's no certain um, uh, how, how big the point has to be or a certain color or anything like that. A point in Algebra 2 or in geometry is just a dot okay and that's not that's not a definition you have to know I'm just saying to you a point in geometry is just a point you might have a line in geometry like this and there might be a point on the line okay now I do want you to know this please copy this in your notes if you would a point is usually symbolized would you write this down please a point in geometry is usually symbolized by write this down please a capital letter all right I'm just going to abbreviate that capital letter okay so a point is usually symbolized by a capital letter so we might call this point a or we might call this point here point X or we might we might call this point right here point s okay but understand that in geometry we are going to have points and there's really no definition that you need to know, but a point in geometry is just like algebra. It's just a dot, and we usually use capital letters to symbolize the point. And sometimes you'll see this. Instead of the word point, you might see this. Point A lies on a certain line, and that means point A. Okay, so pretty simple, but something you need to know. Now, I would like you to copy this into your notes, please. Let's talk about the word or the term line in geometry okay there are there's some things that you need to know about a line so I'm not going to give you a definition of this but would you please take some really good notes about what I want you to know about lines in geometry the first thing I want you to know is they continue in both directions now you need to write that down please a line continues in both directions it does not stop okay a line continues infinitely or it continues continuously in both directions okay so here's an example of a line there's my line I have an arrow here and an arrow here a line continues in both directions indefinitely please write that in your notes something else you need to know about a line how do we symbolize it well there's two ways that you can um, symbolize or write or give a certain line a name now please watch carefully usually you'll use two letters to name a line and those letters have to be points that lie on the line so please go ahead if you would please and copy this line in your note okay you should have written down already that it continues in both directions okay and now um, I would like you to go ahead and copy this line in your notes and now I want to show you something um, you could name this line you could name it by saying watch this 
put a little line above AB, you could call it line AB. Or you could call this line, line AC. Or you could call this line BC. Or you could reverse the letters. You could call this line, line BA. Or you could call it line, I think you get the point, line CA etc. So do you understand how to name a line? Please take notes on this. You name a line by using what? Two points that lie on the line. Now if you've got point E way over here like this, you can't call this line right here, you can't call that line line AE because E does not lie on this line okay so that's one way to give a line a name but there's another way you need to know sometimes in geometry we will use one letter to name a line and it's usually a little a little script or cursive letter like there'll be a little letter a at the end and you don't go like this you don't put a little a and then put a line above it that is not correct okay in geometry you would just simply put line a. Or sometimes at the end right here, there might be a letter L, like that, a cursive L. So then you would call this line, line L. Sometimes there might be an M, a cursive M. You would call it line M, a cursive M. Okay? And so those are the two ways that you name lines. And this is the symbolism that you used. So you could call this line AB, line AC, line BC, or you could just call this line M. Okay, please take really good notes on this. We're going to move on. You need to know what a point is. You need to know what a line is. And of course, I didn't give you any definitions, but you need to understand their characteristics. And now I want to talk about a plane. And I'd like to give you an example. A plane is really like a sheet of paper, okay? Just picture a sheet of paper like this that's kind of hanging in midair, okay? Um, and it's just hanging there. That is what a plane is. There's a couple things about a plane you need to know. Please take some really good notes on this. Write this down. Okay, I'm not going to give you a definition of this. Let me get a drink here real quick. Okay, first of all, a plane continues indefinitely. Okay, it continues indefinitely in all directions okay now when you see a plane written like this right here in geometry you say well Mr. Earhart you're wrong it has boundaries on the edges well we have to draw it that way or you wouldn't be able to see it there wouldn't be any lines anywhere but it is understood in geometry that planes continue indefinitely in all directions okay and we don't look look students we don't get into the thickness of the plane is it paper thin is it three-fourths of an inch thick a quarter of an inch that there's really no set standard in geometry a plane is a flat surface like your desk or like a sheet of paper okay um, or like a piece of wood a flat board okay that is what a plane is now there's different ways to name a plane okay one way to name a plane and I'd like you to go ahead and draw this plane in your notes and put three points that lie in the plane so that's like taking a piece of paper and putting three dots on it okay that's the same thing so we have a plane here like a sheet of paper and we have three points that lie in or lie on this plane and so we could call this right here plane A X T or you could call it plane ATX or plane XAT or plane XTA or TXA or TAX. It doesn't matter what order you write these three letters. What you need to understand is if you're going to use points to name a plane, you must have how many? three you must use three so I'm gonna name this plane plane AXT now pretend I had another point right here and we'll call that point N 
You say, well, Mr. Earhart, which three letters do you use to name the plane? It doesn't matter. You could call this plane A and T, plane A and X, plane X and T, plane, plane TXA. It doesn't matter which three, letter, which, which three letters you choose to use, but you need to use three letters to name a plane. Okay? All right, pretty simple. Now, there is another way to name a plane, and you'll see this quite often in geometry in one of the corners, either here or here or here or here you will see a capital letter and there will not be a point with that letter and when that happens then you know we call that plane whatever the letter is for example if I had a capital C down here and there was no point with it okay there's no point there just C we would call this plane C or you could call it plain AXT or whatever you want to call it. Okay, let's pretend we had an O right here, the letter O, with no point with it. Then we would know we call this plain O. Or you could call it plain and then use three points. That's fine. Okay, so I wanted to cover those three quick, not really definitions, but explanations as to what a point is, a line is, a plane is. I'm not going to test you or quiz you on the actual definitions but you need to be able to read things correctly and know your symbolism and know how to name certain figures in geometry okay now let's continue on and let's take some really good notes you need to know this definition for tests and quizzes so please copy this in your notes what is a postulate a postulate is a statement and this statement is accepted as truth. Or in other words, it's accepted without further justification. In other words, you don't need to prove it. Let me say that again. A postulate is a statement that in geometry we accept without justification, without explanation. They're usually simple comments or statements that are easy to understand and they're obviously true. So you do need to know this definition. A postulate is a statement in which we accept these, these statements without any further proof, proof, excuse me, or justification. Now having said that, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a couple postulates. So now we're jumping right into postulates, excuse me, here in geometry. In geometry this year, students, we're going to have postulates, theorems, corollaries, definitions, okay? Things you're going to have to memorize and be able to um, use these on tests and quizzes. So here's the first postulate we're going to look at this year. Please copy this in your notes. You need to know this for tests and quizzes. Postulate number one, two points determine a line. You need to know that. Two points determine a line. What does that mean, Mr. Earhart? Well, after you've written this down, I want you to write this drawing underneath it. It just simply means that anytime you have two points like this, you can always draw a line through those two points. Isn't that easy? Isn't that so obvious? That's so easy to memorize. Two points determine a line. Okay, so anytime there's two points, here's a point and here's a point, you can always draw a line between those two points. Now I know my drawings aren't the best, but you get the idea. Two points determine a line. Let's continue on. Postulate number two. Three points determine a plane. Now, this one's a little more difficult to understand, but I want you to go ahead and copy this in your notes. And then in a second, I'm going to give you a diagram or a drawing right here that I want you to copy in your notes, okay? But first of all, copy this postulate down. Postulate number two, three points determine a plane. Three points determine a plane. And by the way, on tests and quizzes, when I ask you to uh, memorize certain things like postulate one and postulate two, they're always fill in the blank. And I don't really make them that difficult. Okay, so don't, you'll be okay with these. Now, when I say three points determine a plane, I want you to kind of close your eyes and picture something, would you please? I want you to picture um, two marbles. Maybe they're hanging up in the air like this, okay? Now, if you were to take a sheet of paper and maybe kind of run the sheet of paper um, across those two marbles, okay? So here's your sheet of paper right here across those two marbles. 
I have a question for you. Could you not then roll that paper around and, 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 and it still be touching the two marbles? Could you not flip the paper around the marbles and around anywhere you wanted to? Sure you could. And so let's say, and remember, even though we put boundaries on our planes, remember they really do continue indefinitely. They continue on and on, okay? So let's say that we have a point over here. If I have three points, does that make a plane? Well, sure it does. Remember, this plane right here could be rotated and spun around so that it's still touching these two marbles. And then if that, pretend that sheet of paper was like Play-Doh or, or clay or something you could stretch, you could flip the paper around so it was facing the same direction as this point down here and then stretch the plane and it would pass through this point too. So any time, now if you're having a hard time visualizing that, then just trust me, okay? This is a postulate that you need to understand. Any time you have three points, one, two, three, you can always draw a plane around those three points. Always, okay? And so there's my plane that would encompass those three points. Now you might say, well, Mr. Earhart, um, that's true with four or five points. No, it's not. I want you to picture something. Please listen to me. Pretend you have a sheet of paper lying on your desk right here, okay? And you take your pen and you put three points on your sheet of paper. Then you pick up a marble and I'm going to put dotted lines so it shows we're going up in the air, okay? And I want you to hold a marble up, up here in the air above your desk. Would this desk, your desk plane right here, would it pass through this point way up here? No. Your desk is flat. Or this, I guess I said a sheet of paper. This sheet of paper is flat on your desk. And it contains these three points. But there's no way that you could rotate this piece of paper up in such a way that it would um, also include this point unless those three points stayed on your desk, okay? So three points, any time. Let me go over this again. Now, some of you understood my explanation, some of you didn't. So if you're a little confused, then just memorize this, okay? Any time you have three points, you can always draw a plane around those three points, always. Now, not necessarily four or five, okay? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But if you have three points, you can draw a plane um, that includes those three points and that's what this postulate is saying so please understand that all right let's continue on i do not want you to copy this diagram in your notes but i do want you to open your books to page 15 and look at example number one and in your notes i want you to write down page 15 example number one page 15 example number one all right, are you ready? Here we go. Please turn your books to page 15 to, and write down in your notes page 15, example number one, and let's look at the example in the book. It says this, name three points, okay? We're on page 15, example number one at the top, and it says use the diagram at the right, name three points. Well, students, that's so easy. I mean, we could say point D, point E, uh, point F. Now, here's D, here's point E, here's point F. If you um, said Q, that would be wrong. Look, there's no point like this with Q. There's no point with R. There's no point with the letter M right here. And there's no point with the letter P right there. Okay, and so there are three points in the diagram, and we just circle those for you. Question number two, name the two lines. Okay, well, um, we can name these more than one way. Notice this line right here that I'm highlighting. Do you see that line I'm highlighting right there? Notice that line has a kind of like a little cursive P right here. Um, it's not meant to be a capital P, even though it looks like it's like a cursive P. So you could say line P. Or you could say line, put an arrow on both ends, arrow on both ends, line DE. Or you could say um, line ED. Now, all of these names right here 
are the names of this line right here. Now, let's go ahead and give uh, uh, our, our, na our names to our second line right here. And here's your second line right here. Now, notice the second line that I'm highlighting right here. Notice in your book, please, there's no points on that line. So the only name we can call it would be line M. Line M. That's it. Okay, let's take a look at question number C or number three or letter C. Name two planes. Name two planes. Okay, now please watch carefully and please listen carefully. I'm going to take my red pen and I'm going to highlight one of the planes. Okay, here's one of the planes right here. Okay. Now, what is the name of that plane? Well, see this letter R way down in the corner? You can call it plane R, or you could call it plane, and then use three letters that lie in that plane. And actually, I'm not seeing three letters that lie in that plane. I see D and I see E, but I don't see any other points. So there's real, now if I would have had one more point in that plane, then I could name it plane D, E, and then whatever the third point was. But do you see what I'm saying, students? There are not three points in this plane. F is not in the blue plane. F is in this horizontal plane that's lying this way right here going across okay so we would call this plane right here this outlined in red we would call this plane r all right and i think i just lost my toolbar and that is not good there it is it's back all right very good and let's continue on they also asked us in number um, or letter C here to name the other plane. So I'm going to take green and I'm going to highlight the other plane and here it is. What you have here is basically like two sheets of paper. They're being passed through each other. Okay, so there's the other plane. Now if you'll look in the corner of this plane you'll see a Q. So we would call this plane, plane Q. Okay, now do you see three points that lie in this shaded plane area right here? Well, I see F, but I don't see any other points anywhere. So you need three points to give a plane a name, unless you're going to use the, um, the, the letter in the corner. And that's what we're going to have to do. So the name of this plane is Plane Q. Okay? Plane Q. All right, let's continue on. Let's try another one here. Now, in your notes, I don't want you to try to copy this drawing down. And I really don't want you to take notes on this problem. I just want you to sit back and listen to me go over this problem and see if it makes sense, okay? So here we go. Pretend this is like a book that's opened on your desk, okay? So we do have two separate planes, okay? Here's one plane right over here, okay? And then here's the other plane right over here. And so it's like having a book that's opened and each separate page is a plane. Now, having said that, let's take a look at uh, question number one right here. Name four points. Well, I only see four. I see T, U, S, and W. Here's a point here with T, one with U, one with S, and one with W. So we named four points. Now, question number two, name two lines. Okay, no problem. Um, this line right here that I'm highlighting in green, we can call that line N if you would like to because of the cursive little letter N right here. So we can call that line N or we could call it, you could put TU and put a little line with arrows on both ends or you could say US. Okay, all of these expressions right here are naming the exact same line. Now the other line, see this little L right here? It's kind of hard to see. They're kind of, it's a little tricky. See this letter L? That L is referring to this line right here that's going up and down, right here, okay? And there are um, no points on that line. Like on this line over here, we had point T and point U and point S. There's no points on this line. So the only name we can give that line would be line L line L. And now lastly, we're going to name two planes, okay? Well, let's start off by naming this plane over here, OK? 
Okay, I'm going to highlight the plane for you. There it is. Let's go ahead and name that plane. Now notice there's a capital letter down here in the corner. So we can call that if we would like to. We can call that plane J. Or you could also call your plane plane. Now look for three points that lie in this plane. You could call it plane TUS or TSU or SUT or STU or et cetera, et cetera. So these two names name this plane right here to the left. Now, I'm going to highlight this other plane over here to the right. Now, do you see three points that lie in this plane? Well, no, I only see one, W. So we can't name, we cannot name this plane using three points. However, we can name this plane using this capital letter that's down here in the corner. So we would call that plane, plane K. I hope you're getting all this. And I hope I know it's a little boring and redundant, but we're laying a foundation so that the rest of the year in geometry, when we talk about things, it'll make sense and you'll know what I'm referring to. So it's very important that you understand this. Okay, let's continue on, and we're going to go a little fast, a little faster now. Okay, all right. I would like you to copy this definition in your notes. Okay collinear points. Please copy this in your notes. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. Underneath this, I would like you to draw a line, okay? And it doesn't have to be horizontal. It can be slanted like this. There's a line, okay? Now, all of these points that are on this line, all of these points are collinear because they lie on the same line. So please put this in your notes. We'll call this X, Y, Z, and T. And then up here, we're going to put point P. Now, listen to me. Points X, Y, Z, and T are all collinear points because they all lie on the same line. However, our points X, P, and Y collinear. No, they don't all lie on the same line. Our points T, Z, and P collinear. No, they are not. They don't lie on the same line. So collinear points are points that lie on the same line. Please copy this in your notes. Coplanar points. Coplanar. Now, coplanar points are points that lie on the same plane, okay? Coplanar points are points that lie on the same plane. So please go ahead and draw this in your notes if you would. Go ahead and draw this plane. And then inside here, we're going to put points uh, J and point M and point a, okay, and then if you're a pretty good drawer, which I'm not, but I'm going to go ahead and put a dotted line coming down like this to give it some depth, and I'm going to put a point right here, and we're going to call that point G, okay? Now, do you see how J, A, and M all lie in the same plane? They, they lie in this top plane right here. So we would say these three points are coplanar. However, our points J, A, M, and G coplanar. Do all three of these, all four of these points lie in the same plane? No, they do not. It would be like having a sheet of paper up here in the air with three points drawn on the sheet of paper and then having a marble down here below the sheet of paper, okay? It does not lie in the same plane. So points J, A, and M are coplanar. However, points J, A, M, and G are not coplanar because they do not all lie in the same plane. Now, another definition, please, if you would copy this down. Coplanar lines. Coplanar lines. Now, coplanar lines are lines that lie in the same plane. That lie in the same plane, excuse me. Coplanar lines are lines that lie in the same plane. Now, after you've copied that down, I would like you to draw this picture in your notes, if you would, please, okay? Here is a plane, all right? Now, watch this carefully. Here's a line right here. Copy this in your notes, please. And here's another line intersecting it. Now, what this is like is having a sheet of paper 
and you draw two lines on the sheet of paper. Those two lines lie in the same plane. So we say we're going to call this line A, and we're going to call this line C. Lines A and C are coplanar because they lie in the same line. Now, I don't have very good drawing skills, but I'm going to try to draw this for you. In your notes, if you can do this, please put an arrow here and put a line going down and then put a point here like it's hitting it and then put a dotted line and then continue a solid line like this. Now what I'm trying to do and I'm probably not doing a very good job of it it would be like taking a piece of paper and then punching a pencil through the sheet of paper so that the pencil is sticking up and down going through the plane. Now <clears throat> does that line intersect the plane? Does it go through the plane? Yes, it does. But is that line lying in the plane? And of course, the answer is no. All right. In order for a line to lie in a plane, the entire line, all of its points, has to lie inside of that plane. And so this red line here is like a pencil that you poke through the sheet of paper and it's going up and down. So are lines A and C coplanar? Yes, they both lie in the same plane. However, let's call this line M. Are lines C and M coplanar? No, because they do not lie in the same plane. I hope you're getting this, okay? Please take really good notes, draw really well the best that you can, and write down these definitions. Coplanar lines are lines that lie in the same plane. Now, I would like you to write in your notes, please don't copy this picture down, but in your notes, I would like you to write page 15, example number two. Page 15, example number two, and also turn your books to that page. So page 15, example number two. Now, I'm going to read the problem out loud. Please take some really good notes. Again, in your notes, please write page 15, example number two. Okay, letter A says name three points that are collinear. So we're looking for three points that lie on the same line. Well, looks like D, point D, point E, and point F all lie on the same plane. So name three points that are collinear points D, E, and F. Pretty simple. Letter B says name four points that are coplanar. So we need four points that are lying in the same plane. Now this line right here once again is like a pencil that you have stuck through a sheet of paper. Okay that line is not lying in the plane. So H is not in the plane. But if you look at this plane right here there are four points that are lying in that plane. And those four points are points D, G, E, and F. So they want us to name four coplanar points, or four points that lie in the same plane. And that would be points D, G, E, and F. Not too bad. Now let's take a look at letter C. Name three points that are not collinear three points that are not collinear. Well, there's many answers. I mean, you could say D, G, and E. They don't lie in the same, the same line. Or you could say E, F, G. They don't lie on the same line. Here's E, here's F, here's G, way over here. Okay? You could say H, E, D. Points H, E, D do not lie on the same line. Here's H up here. Now H and E lie on the same line, but D does not. So are all three points collinear? No, all three points do not lie on the same line. Okay, I hope that makes sense. We're just trying to practice, practice, practice. All right, let's continue on. Okay, now I don't want you to draw this, this picture in your notes, of course, but I do want you to write in your notes, page 15, bottom one through six. Page 15, bottom one through six. Please copy this in your notes. All right, and then go ahead and look in your books at the bottom of page 15. Number one says, name two lines. I'm going to go really fast, okay? Do you see this line right here? We're going to call that line N. So, line N. I'm going to be pretty sloppy. I'm going to go fast, okay? And for this line right here, I'm going to call that line 
M. If you want to use two points, you're more than welcome to say something like CD with a line over it. That's totally fine, okay? So there, we've named two lines. Question number two, name two planes. Okay, for this top plane right here, I'm going to use the letter that's in the corner right here. So I'm going to call that plane T. Now, for this plane right here, I'm going to use this letter right here in the corner, and I'm going to call it plane S. I told you I'm going to go pretty fast. I'll take some really good notes here, okay? Plane S. Now, by the way, you could also call it plane and then use any three points that you want in this plane. You could call it plane CBD, plane CDE, plane EDC, plane EDB, etc. Okay? That's up to you. All right, number three, name three points that are collinear. So we're looking for three points that lie on the same line. Look for three points that lie on the same line. Well, look at this line right here. Look at that line right there. That line has three points. And so the answer would be points C, D, and E are collinear points. Points C, D, and E are collinear points. All right. Number four, name three points that are not collinear. Now, there's more than one answer. You understand that, okay? I'm going to circle three points. You can look over here. I'm going to circle three points that do not lie on the same line. Point A, C, and B. Those three points are not collinear. So the answer to number four would be points A, B, and C. Now there's other answers you could have chosen. You understand that. But these three points right here are not collinear. Number five, name four points that are coplanar. That means name four points that lie in the same plane. Well, if you'll look at your top plane right here to the left, there's not even four points in that plane. So we can't even we can't even use that plane, okay? But if you'll look at your bottom plane here, we definitely have four points in this bottom plane, this plane right here. Now, M is not a point. Please don't use M. If M was referring to a point, first of all, there would be a point right here, and second of all, it would be a capital M, okay? So please don't say M. S is not a point because there's no point like this with the S. The four points that I see that lie in this plane that I've highlighted are points C, D, E, and B. So points C, D, E, and B in any order are four points that are coplanar. That means they lie in the same plane. And then lastly, name two lines that are coplanar. Name two lines that are coplanar. It's going to be tricky, and I kind of like these tricky problems, so please pay attention, okay? Now, is it possible for a, for a line to lie in more than one plane? Well, sure it is, definitely. I mean, uh, think of if you have a plane like this, and then you put a little slit in it like this, and you ran another plane going down through it. Now remember, I'm not a very good artist here. You guys understand that, but you get my point. Um, and so you have a sheet of paper running through another sheet of paper. Well, this line right here would be in both planes. So yes, it's definitely possible for a line to be in two planes. So see this, see this line right here, students. Listen to me. See this line? Do you see how it's right in the crease of these two planes? Like one plane is going upward like this. And then this plane is going... It's almost like the corner of a wall, okay? Pretend this is the floor of a room right here that I'm highlighting. That's the floor. And then here's the wall going upward. Here's the wall going up. And then right here in this crease, that's where the floor meets the wall, right there, okay? And if any of you have any problems with this, maybe your uh, supervising teacher can pause the video and they can show you, okay, what I'm talking about. But if you look at it like that, you'll see how this green line right here lies in this plane right here, but it also lies in this plane right here too. It lies in both of them, okay? And so with that in mind, uh, back to question number six, 
name two lines that are coplanar. Well, this line right here, this line right here in green, and this line right here in green, both lie in this plane right here. So we could say that line P, that's what this P refers to, is this line right here. Okay, so we could say that line P and line N are coplanar. But there's also another set we could look at too, students. Look at this. See this line right here? This line right here that I'm coloring. And then this same line right here in the crease. Both of those lines lie in this plane right here. Both of them. So we could also say line P and line M are co planar because both of those lines lie in the same plane. I know this is so much to learn, but it's really important you're seeing this, okay? I know it's a long video, but it's very important you understand this. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on to something else. I hope you're taking really good notes on this past problem right here. You should have written in your notes page 15 bottom one through six, then hopefully you took some really good notes on the problem. Okay, you need to know this definition for tests and quizzes, so please copy this in your notes. What is a segment? It is part of a line that has endpoints on both ends. It includes all of the points between the two endpoints. All right, what is a segment? It's part of a line that has endpoints on both ends it includes all of the points between the two endpoints. Let me give you an example. Please copy this in your notes, okay? This would be a segment. And the reason it's important that you understand this is a segment has to have endpoints, okay? Now, how do you name a segment? You name a segment by its endpoints. So if I have an A here and a B over here, I would call that segment A B. Now, do you see the difference between segment AB and line AB? If AB was a line, then I would put an arrow here, and I would put an arrow here, and I, and I would call that line AB. But because I don't have a line, because it does not continue indefinitely in both directions, um, it's a segment. Because of that, then I put segment AB, or you could also call it segment BA. Does that make sense? Take a really good look at this and make sure you understand it, okay? This is a segment. All right, let's continue on. I also want you to take notes on what a ray is. Please copy this in your notes, a ray. A ray is part of a line. Now listen, it has an end point at one end and it continues indefinitely going the other direction. So here's what a ray looks like. It has an end point. Please copy this in your notes. You should write the words down and then write this example down. It has an end point and then the other end has an arrow. Now I know my lines aren't very straight and I guess I should do this here. All right, here's a ray. Notice one end has an end point and the other end continues indefinitely. This is what we call a ray. Now, when you name a ray, you use the endpoint, we're going to call this endpoint X, and you use any other point on the ray. So let's say we have a T here, please take some really good notes on this, please write all of this down. If I wanted you to name this ray, you would call it ray XT. Now look what I put. I don't put arrows on both ends, that would be a line and I don't put a line that would be a segment, I put this, ray xt. Okay? You don't have to put a point right here. You just draw a little line like this and put an arrow on the end. By the way, are you listening? It would be incorrect. It would be wrong to call this ray tx. That's not right. The first letter right here always has to be the end point. And what is the endpoint of the ray? It's X. T is not the endpoint, okay? X is the endpoint. And so we would call this ray, ray XT. You know what else you could call it? You could also call it ray XP if you wanted to. 
that would be totally acceptable. As long as your end point, where the point is here in the end, is your first letter, you can use any other point that lies on the ray to name it. Does that make sense? So we could call this ray, ray xt, or we could call it ray xp. Now I have given you a ton of notes today, and I know your brains are probably fried, but it's very, very important that you understand everything I've said so far. And if you're a little bit confused, go back and rewatch some, rewatch some of this, and make sure you really understand it. Okay? Call or email if you have any questions.